Hey there guys, so this is basically going to be the moment of truth. I got my CPU in, um, installed it in the motherboard, installed the RAM, installed the H100. This is obviously just all on top of the actual motherboard box for testing purposes to make sure everything boots. Um, and it is the moment of truth, basically. Uh, see if this thing boots. Uh, making sure I'm not carrying any static by touching that. We'll come around to the back of the power supply here. Flicking into the on position. And we'll take our handy dandy screwdriver and we'll uh, jump some pins. So everything is on, you can hear it, it's kicking out quite a bit of air, there we go, turn down a bit after the pre-boot check here, or the post-boot check, whatever you want to call it, let's see if the system will post, fingers crossed, oh snap, looks like we're in business. And Windows is loading files right off of my USB 3 stick, which is awesome. So, uh, FYI guys, this is how quick Windows loads files and starts up um, off of a USB 3 stick. It, that is amazing, is it not? Um, I've done this for a lot of builds so far. Bam! Already at Windows startup. That usually takes a decent amount of time. Hey guys, so today we're going to take a quick look at the uh, Gigabyte X79 UP4's BIOS. There goes my phone. Um, so I'm just gonna jump the system here to start her up. And uh, we'll boot right into the BIOS and I'll show you guys what's what. Sorry for the super duper old CRT screen. Oh, went a little too far in the boot process there. Booted before the uh, CRT was even able to turn itself on. There we go. So this is the Gigabyte um, 3D BIOS, the dual UEFI BIOS. I've talked about this a little bit in my uh, previous videos. Uh, it gives you a 3D interface where basically you can just use your mouse to click on um, whatever specific components you want to access some basic features. Um, you can actually even switch the view so you're looking at it kind of from the other side of the motherboard. Um, so if you wanted to uh, basically like you could click on your processor and your RAM it's all linked together in one one setting area here but here you've got your like your clock ratio and your uh, CPU frequency basically and all that. Um, and it shows you basically right here, um, live, what that will uh, result in. You've got your B, BCLK, uh, clock control, XMP, you got your memory timing for your first channel, second channel, third channel, and fourth channel. It is quad channel, obviously. Uh, then you got your voltages here. Uh, as you can see, I've made a, f a few little modifications here so far. I've got it running at, uh, I've got my 3930K running at 4.6 gigahertz with a CPU V core of 1.1, 1 .1 or uh, sorry, 1.330 volts. 1.140 is the default. Um, and you can just close that out. Uh, one thing that you can actually do, which is kind of neat, is you can actually move this window around just like you can in. Uh, like Windows basically, which I thought was actually pretty cool. So you can kind of move it to the side here and you can kind of see your, some live uh, CPU statistics over here. Um, and you can actually like hover over them and it tells you exactly what they are and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I'll just run you through all the different sections here. So there's the system tuning, which is the one I just showed you. There's the 3D power, which gives you some um, uh, PWM phase control stuff, your uh, PWM switch rate for your CPU, VTT, PWM switch rate, all that stuff. Some more voltage stuff here. Uh, you got your load line calibration and your V-core protection and all that. Your current, uh, thermal. Uh, you got your integrated device control. 
on the back here so you can adjust the settings for your rear panel, uh, your eSATA audio device line controller, uh, then you get your USB settings. Uh, then you can click on your uh, PCI Express uh, slots, your expansion slots down here basically. And you can set your uh, uh, initialization display uh, priority basically. You can see which slot you want to choose from there. And then there's the PCI ROM priority. And basically that's just uh, some more advanced stuff that you don't really need to worry about unless you're running a lot of extra things on your board. Uh, then there's the um, uh, they call it the UEFI dual BIOS additional BIOS features and such uh, so you can set like the boot up num lock state to be enabled and you can set the full screen logo to show or not show um, um, smart fan and all that kind of stuff uh, I'll actually disable this because I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the full screen boot anyway uh, so that's basically the 3D kind of toned down basic version, but if you want you can click any of these settings down at the bottom of your screen here, and then basically they bring this up. And this is more of your typical um, BIOS that everyone is kind of used to. You've got your uh, MIT current status advanced frequency settings, advanced memory settings, advanced voltage settings, PC health status, all that kind of stuff. And you can use your keyboard to navigate these as well. Um, and then you can go over to the system tab here. You can see the system information, some stuff about the CPU, the amount of memory enabled. So you can see I've got 16 gigs enabled. Um, got the model of the motherboard, the BIOS version, the BIOS date, BIOS ID, all that kind of stuff. You can set the system date and the system time down there at the bottom. Um, you can set your ATA port information. It just shows you what's installed there. I got a crappy uh, 200 gig hard drive installed right now that I just have lying around. Uh, then you've got your BIOS features tab, which gives you your boot options. Uh, then you've got your hard drive, boot priorities, um, all that kind of stuff in here. You can set your admin password, your user password. Uh, you got your peripheral control. So you got your LAN um, boot option, you got the enable, disable uh, LAN controller, audio device control, enable, disable, USB, enable, disable. Um, your SATA controller mode, AHCI is pretty standard now. You probably wouldn't be using uh, IDE or RAID. And, well, RAID is pretty common as well, I suppose, for these high-end systems. I'll be using it. Um, AHCI is what I'm using now. Uh, then you got your legacy USB support. XHCI handoff support, um, EHCI handoff, uh, port 6064 emulation. Uh, basically, that's for enabling, uh, as you can see up here, the complete USB keyboard legacy support. Uh, then there's your USB 3.0 controllers, the two of them here, the Fresco controllers. You can enable and disable. Uh, Super I.O. configuration. And then the Marvel ATA controller for basically the uh, Marvel SATA controller stuff. And again, you can change that into RAID mode or AHCI mode. I'll actually be using RAID on that as well in the future. And uh, there's actually three of these. Because um, there are, uh, what is it, four? Yeah, four. Well, there's uh, four internal connectors. And then your, uh, your eSATAs as well, I believe, is um, how they have that set up. Uh, in the power management tab, you got your AC power back um, for, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, basically, when you lose power, memory means that it'll uh, it'll remember what the state was on before you lost power, and then when power is restored, it'll go back to what it was at originally. So if your system was on and you lost power and then you regained power, it would turn itself back on. If it was off and you lost power, it would stay off. Otherwise, you can set it to always on or always off after it loses power. Uh, this is power on by keyboard, um, that just enables power on by keyboard, so you don't actually have to push any, like, physical button on your, uh, on your system. Um, I should actually enable that, but, uh, whatever. And you can do zoom by alarm, this is a sleep setting, uh, so basically you can set that to enabled, and then you can set up, like, a, a wake up day, um, Oops. So yeah, you can set a wake up day, uh, 0 to 31. Um, you can set a wake up hour, wake up minute, wake up second. Uh, that's a high precision event timer. 
not exactly sure what that is utilized for. I'm sure it has something to do with just clocks and that kind of thing, basically. Um, soft off, power button, blah, blah, blah. Stuff in here, and then you've got your just typical save and exit. So we'll save and exit the setup. And you guys should see that the uh, full screen BIOS boot is actually off, and we just get a typical text based BIOS instead of an image boot. Just like that. American Megatrends. And then it boots up to Windows. But we don't want Windows, so I'll just restart here and go back to the BIOS. And I'm actually going to re enable the full screen boot because apparently that American Megatrends one doesn't actually show you any useful information like a lot of other uh, boot BIOSes do. It just shows you the logo, which I mean, hell, that's all the, the full screen one does. So we'll just re enable that. There's your virtualization technology. Uh, when, when you're in this mode, you can actually just click this to save your changes and exit, which is pretty neat. 